Welcome to another Notch tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at ray trace glass. I'm going to set up a basic ray trace glass scene and then we're going to move on and do something a little bit more advanced. To start off with, I'm just going to open a blank project. I'm going to set up ray tracing on it. And then in the scene, first thing I'm going to do is import a HDRI image for the skylight. Now we're going to add a skylight. Connect that to the root node. I'm going to add some geometry, some shape 3Ds. Add those to the root node. I'm going to make one of them a plane so we've got something to bounce the light off. It's a very simple scene. I'm going to take this sphere. I'm just going to add a few more subdivisions to it so it looks a little rounder. I'm going to copy paste the sphere so that I can add the glass to this sphere. So I'm going to add an environment image and then I'm going to connect that up to the skylight. Once I've connected up to the skylight, I'm going to pipe the HDRI image through the environment image. So the good thing about the skylight now is you can turn on the visible sky dome from within the skylight. So we've got something to see. So for this shape, I'm going to add the ray trace glass material. I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to connect it up to the shape 3D. You can see that when you connect it up, you just get a black shiny sphere. To get the glass working, we need the path tracer in the scene. So I'm going to add a path tracer and connect it up to the root node. So now you can see the glass working within the path trace scene. There is one other quick thing I'm going to add, which is I want to add some refinement I'm going to add RT refinement to the scene, connect that up. What I want to do is make it refine a bit quicker. At the moment it's doing 10,000 refinement steps, so I'm going to change this to 50 and just add a bit of AI denoising, just so that it refines a bit quicker and looks a bit nicer in the screen when it refines. So you can see it's just refining it and then blurring out that refinement using the AI denoiser. So the next thing to show you is once you've got ray trace glass working, all the uh, settings on the ray trace glass material are set to optimal settings. So you'll get nice ray trace glass out the box. But what you need to look at is how the path tracer works on ray trace glass. So I'm going to copy this object. I'm going to add glass to this as well. And I'm going to put that object behind, connect it to the root node. And as you see, when I connect it to the root node, the rays will pass through this first glass material, but then they won't pass through the second glass material, so you get black on the screen. Now that's not an error, that's just how the path tracer is set up. At the moment it's only got a refraction depth of 3. So you can see it's seeing this object behind as a solid object, because it's not been able to refract through it. So what I need to do is just up the refractions on this and you can see immediately as soon as you do that, you can see through the two objects. Now, if I add another object to that and connect that to the root node and connect to the glass material. Again, if you look through those objects, you can see the third object is now not refracting. So what I need to do is go back to the path tracer and just nudge this refraction depth up a little bit more till you see through it. You don't want to go too high because it's quite a slow process when you start refracting through several layers of glass. So now I've got refractions working. All my objects are refracting nicely. Another thing you can do is the bounce from the glossy depth needs to just be pushed up a little bit so you get the bouncing from each object the moment it, when it's set to three, it'll only bounce on a couple of objects and reflect those reflections. But if you turn up something like eight or nine, it will start reflecting all the objects onto each other. So I've set the glass up. 
Another thing you can do with glass is I'll take this object, I'll take the material off it and I'll just copy paste this. You can do a lot of different techniques with the glass. So if I want this glass to look a little bit rougher and a bit thicker, I can add some roughness to it. And then what I'll do is I'll add some absorption to it. I'm going to add an absorption color. I'm just going to make that red. At the moment there's no color on there. So absorption is like the thickness of the material. So it's almost like how, not how thick it physically is, but how thick material is and how uh, the speed at which the rays go through it. So if I up the absorption amount, I'll put this on say 50. You can see that this looks more like a, a rough glass marble now with a bit more thickness to it so that looks like a completely different material to the uh, basic glass when you do add roughness to a material it will take a lot longer to refine something like this to refine the roughness of that you may want to put the refinement up to something like five to ten thousand to get rid of the roughness on it um, at the moment, I've just got it set to 50 with the AI denoiser just to make it look nice quickly. Another one of the options you have on glass, you can add a diffuse coat color. So this diffuse coat color is just the color of the actual object surface rather than the, the color of the internal material. So this will just add whatever color you want it to be to the actual surface of the object. And you can see how the absorption color on the other sphere actually makes that material look a lot thicker and like the light rays aren't getting through it so much. So what we can do now, now we've got this set up, if we want to just refine this a bit longer. So I'm going to set the refinement to 5000. I'm going to turn off the AI denoising and we're just going to let that refine. Now that's refined, we can see the differences between the materials. Rough glass material is now on the right. It's fully refined and looks like a plasticky glass or a rough marble. The blue diffuse coat in the middle and then the base normal glass on the left hand side. Now this material should be applied to any transparent glass objects that you want to add to your scenes. It can be put on anything from bottles to windows. You have to have thickness to those objects. So when you model them, they can't just be a flat poly. They have to be a thick model. So a window, for example, it'd have to be double-sided with the edges modeled as well. The reason for that is the glass needs to be calculated how thick it is to how it distorts the background. And it has to calculate how the rays from the ray tracing affect it. You need thickness to any model that you make for glass. Um, otherwise, the objects will be black because obviously the rays will go through the front surface and it will never hit the back surface to calculate how the light's working within them. Now we've looked at this scene, I'm going to set up a more complex scene and run through how we're going to set that up and how all the different glass materials and liquids are set up within it. Thank you for watching and keep an eye out for the next Notch tutorial.